Hello folks and welcome back. Today we're at Dragon Trail Seaside with the GR4 lap time challenge. Now, I appreciate you haven't seen me in a little while, probably four weeks since I've made it a video. Uh, there is a clear reason for that and it was my body decided it had had enough and I've spent a couple of weeks in hospital. Had a couple of operations, bits and pieces and I'm back on my way to fighting fit. We'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute, but we're just going to choose today's car. You've been doing this for the last two weeks, and I believe the event closes tonight, so this is a little bit late for you. And I apologise, just hope you've done all right without me being around. I just wanted to show you that with a couple of days' practice, you can actually um, nail this one quite quickly. It's very much more of a controllers type race. So, my 40, what record is a 147.4. I think the fastest times are 144.562. As we just go out to the track, there you can see my 147.4 on the right hand side. And we're going to do seven or eight laps just for familiarisation. So, just to give myself a heads up, I went and watched another YouTuber do this. He posted a video a couple of weeks ago and he talked me around. So, it's not just you watching videos to, to understand how to do it. Um, I was kind of caught short for time. I've tried to put more effort into my day job, my full-time job, just this last couple of weeks whilst I've been trying to recover. And with that, it's meant I haven't been able to, to do anything online. I haven't been able to race because of my condition. Um, I've just took things steady. I've slept a lot, done all sorts of things. So as we come round here, this is for me the key part of the circuit. It's breaking into, and it's very difficult not to break, but breaking into this corner, getting the right line, and that is the perfect line for me. That's where I want to be being. I want to buy left front wheel or my right front wheel to hook those curbs. You'll see as we go through and do a couple of laps that there is the opportunity to get all the way over onto the full red, as long as you're keeping two wheels on that black curb. It seems to be acceptable second part of the circuit that is critical to this race is here what we call the death chicane or the chicane of death it's a continuous circle I lift and I've just slid it and hit the wall because I clipped that curb wrong and that's something that you've got to watch going all around this circuit the more you borrow the more risk you're going to take so the chances of the car flicking a wheel getting up on two wheels just come through the curbs is, is significant so here we go then, let's talk you through the lap as a go. This one might, this one might uh, actually be an aborted, but let's see where we go. So there we are, the ghost is set at 0.4 ahead, you know that now. As we're chucking down this straight, we're going to look to move over, move over to the right and side of the brake, just on the red. So as you see it, as the car crosses it, brake on the red, clip that kerb, third gear. Oh, I borrowed a little bit too much there as I said the more you borrow the more risk you take up to fifth before this next corner now if I try and clip that kerb it throws the car massively the brake just on the change of texture on the road surface third gear for that apex and you can see we've just pushed away in front of the ghost now that ghost is a 150 this needs to be a good three seconds better than that to improve so we've got half a second on the car behind now and we've messed that corner up. We've improved better there, we've got that back. We've done well through that corner, just borrowing as much as we possibly think we can. Now breaking down here, car's length before the hundreds where we're going to break. There's a change of colour on the white line. Should be able to see it and a ghost caught us back up and we're accelerating third, maybe that should be second. We're just pulling slightly away from the ghost. Half a second up on our previous lap. Let's see if we can get through here a bit better. We lifted a lot longer there. We just, just got past that barrier and we pulled out a significant amount of time. So this could be a 147 and it'd be a good one for us to talk through. Just sliding into that corner, but we're going to get a late apex. We have to accelerate away. That's cool good with that if that gives us a 147 we're all right now target time i think is 146 to get a goal there it is just inside the 147 
So now we know if we're doing 0.4 of that ghost, if we're anywhere near that ghost or ahead of it, we've potentially got an improvement in our time. Now saying that, a 147.7 isn't a gold, but this 147.4 is a gold, but it's not very secure. It's in like 16,500th place. And ideally what I want to do today is just shake the cobwebs off and come back with a 146, that would be nice. So we're going to let me do some laps around here and you can watch it and mute my voice if you don't like it. I'll just tell you where I've been and what I've been up to and why I've not been around. So, around about three weeks ago I, I had pains in my back and got admitted to hospital on, on the Sunday and I was operated on on the Monday because a tube had collapsed in my kidney. My left kidney's decided it's got a stone in it and that stone is blocking that tube and that tube gave up so they've had to put another tube in to open it up. All very gory stuff but with that kind of took me off my feet for a week. I was kind of knocked over. Didn't really have much awareness of where I was on lots of drugs, which isn't very nice because it messes with your body, it messes with your, your eating, it messes with your stomach, it messes with everything. So with that, I came home on the, the Wednesday, Thursday of last week, the week before. And I just rested up for the weekend. Um, it's like other complications from the surgery is that my heart rate, my blood pressure is up. So not to get too excited and not to uh, not to not to go out partying or dancing or running any marathons. Not just at the minute. Oh, we just lost it there. Made it for the apex. Oh, if I'd have just hit second, I might have actually found a quick way around that corner then, but hey-ho. So, not allowed to party, not allowed to go dancing, not allowed to do anything like that at the minute until we've had a second surgery. So, as it is, the tube they've put in is it's just a temporary thing. I've got to go and have my kidney fixed. So, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll be going back in for another surgery where they're going to remove the stone and then replace the tube with a more permanent fixture and with that that'll mean another couple more weeks off and there's nothing I can do about this folks it's purely how life happens it's come out of the blue it's not one of the things that happens to us all it's just happened to me and with that we've just got to get over it life life is full of all these little triple trials and tribulations so with that being the case we're just getting it on so I do apologize over the next I'd say four weeks, it's going to be a bit itty bitty. Um, my priority is my job and my family and um, just keeping things in order. And I'd appreciate if you've subscribed, if you've liked, if you've commented. I've tried to come back to you. And, but I do also appreciate the fact that you're sticking with the channel. So thank you very much. And with that, I've got to give a big shout out to my employers, the people at work people I work with they've been fantastic they sent me this big box of chocolates which I have to confess has gone it, it was it was a lovely thing it just captured my sweet tooth nicely and with that being the case they've been phenomenal with me about being able to work from home etc and being able to do as much as I possibly can and even though I'm supposed to be slowing down I've still tried to give as much commitment as I possibly can and do the bits that I'm supposed to do. So, thankfully, touch wood, I've been able to keep up with my work and get ahead of it. And I'm actually taking a much needed week off this week. This is my holiday week at the end of the summer. The UK's just had its uh, August bank holiday, for which, again, I spent the weekend in hospital because I've got a few complications, but, and I won't go into those, they're a bit boring. So, but with that being the case, I'm at home again. I'm, I'm a happy chappy because I'm out of hospital. I've, I am taking a whole fistful of drugs at the minute and I just need to get that out of my system and get myself better. But, but with that being the case, 
we'll need to get on to bigger and brighter things. So just as we're running round here, we're going to make some extra laps. We're going to just run some some smooth, fast and flowing corners. Other things that have happened while stopping off, we've had update 1.20. Now I know some of you aren't entirely happy with update 1.20 because they seem to have changed a few things. Hard tyres for one seem to have been nerfed. You've got what some people describe as eight laps at Sardinia is now three before the tyres really start to go off, which, well, I might have got that wrong actually. You used to be able to get 11 laps out of a tyre at Sardinia but it's now 8 at the Sard you used to be able to get 4 or 5 laps out of a set of hards and now you're down to 3 laps all it means chaps is extra pit stops they're just trying to balance the tyres because you can go long on the hards, really long and then the mediums were not representative and the softs were just looking like they were too soft so I think the, the hardest thing with it is the amount of wear in that they put on the tyres. They shouldn't actually put the wear accelerator on that great. But I don't know how much it's going to change things other than the fact that I've created videos that show you tyre wear that shows you how to complete the missions and the tyre wear is not representative. So I might just have to go back and do some more videos just to say look from 1.2 tyre wears have changed so this is how you now do those videos this is how you do those levels but at the end of the day I've had a couple of messages from people saying how did you get this level of PP for Alsace how did you get this level of PP for wherever and I do put it at the start of every video folks so if you if you are skipping through to see the race and you've skipped it it's at the start of every video just be aware and it's there for you you don't it's not overly complex I don't think I've been too complex in the way I've described it. Maybe I've oversimplified it sometimes. So I don't normally talk about the modifications from the auto zone. So if I've put side splitters on or wide body, I've normally just mentioned it, but I haven't gone into the whole thing to show you. So hey ho, that's the way it is. But look out for those videos if if you're new to the channel or relatively new to what's going on and you haven't seen those videos or you're not that far in the cafe menus then they'll be there if you go and search for them you'll find them with that being said on all up to date and all the cafe menus the new ones we've got delivered in 1.2 where every car collection ones didn't have to go out and actually win anything or beat anything but we did get Barcelona modifications so Barcelona's now got a dirt track which is the like rallycross, autocross type circuit. And I have to say it's awesome. Getting a Ford Fiesta around there, or a Ford Focus, sorry. Get that four wheel drive car drifting around there. There's a shortcut as well if you care to find it. There's a little bit of barrier play you can play with and find a gap and nip through the barrier. It doesn't, so it doesn't give you that much time because you have to go slower to go through it. But there is a little alternative. I don't know if they've actually nerf that with time penalties online but I quite enjoy that, it's a little good rally stage thing, I'm hoping they'll create some more of those so we could have like a little series of rally cross tests, that would be awesome that would be really good so how are we doing here on the laps we're consistently in the 147s now aren't we look, 145 147.5, 147.6 then we dropped to the 147.9 we seem to have Excuse me, what would you call it? There we go, I've just fluffed that up, haven't I? And that's the end of this little stint, I believe. And then we're going to take you on to the last two laps. Now, there's two laps here. This is this is going to be where we make it. And I'm uh, hopefully, once I've just edited this thing up and done the voice overlay, I'll just put a nice little video overlay up there in the top left-hand corner for you to see the outside view. So here we go then, 147 to be we're ideally looking for a 146 let's see what we can play with let's see what we can do so coming down to this right hand bend I'm going to brake later than I've told you to earlier 
I'm going to break on the edge of the black and white, and that's to try and get up the chuff of my ghost. Now, I've just let him go a little bit there. So I can be faster. Notice we don't have that little time above the gear indicator. That's because this is the first lap out. I'm just noticing though that we can see we can gain a couple of tenths of seconds into that right hand corner just back there. Coming down the hill, this is the critical bit. This is what you've got to get right. I put two tyres in the grass there. Look at that. Oh poor. Poor. So we're just gonna run this lap out now and then start again. Come back up the hill. Let's see if we can put one together. Breaking on the 110. Third gear as we come out of it. Thank you, Kai, for that. Just letting me know where to use third gear. That's a good mate. But I'm never going to be a, an alien on this. I'm just good enough to scrape gold mostly. Not bad for an old dude. Go okay, braking just before that curb's down on the left hand side. Try and leave the entry late. Just try and hit the apex late so we can accelerate out. And here we go. We can shave this corner, try and take a little bit off there. There we go. Try and straighten us up. Let us accelerate for longer. Right, that was a 148.6, that was pretty poor, but we knew that. We're already up on the ghost, we've got a better run out of that corner, gonna break just after the start of the red, just before the start of the black curb. Second gear back up to third to try and drive out the corner on the boost. And changing up to fifth gear before this corner, try and clip a bit, break just on the change of tarmac. Down to third. Clip that apex, charge up the hill. And now we're going to try and set us up for this left hand corner. We're quarter of a second up. We're not quarter of a second up on the 147, though. We're quarter of a second up on our fastest lap, which is a 149, 47.9. So let's not worry. We're not to get too excited at this point. Breaking on the 110. Actually braked a little bit late there, second gear, we're going to accelerate out in second, up to third. And there we go, chicane of death, it's all up us here, we're ahead of the ghost. Just a lift, hear the turbo chatter then. And we're ahead of the ghost. There we go, we're 1.9 seconds up on our previous lap. That puts us in a 146.7. And we just got a late entry to that corner. Let's go, let's push it, push it. And everything we do, clip that corner. A 146.87. And that's exactly what I wanted from today. So. So how we make that happen is by getting a decent time. And I say decent, the 147's in the golds, but you chase your ghost, you get familiar with the track over eight or 10 laps, and then you go out and try and put it all together in one hit. And that's me driving really, 40 minutes of driving really. There were a couple of edits that you didn't see where I Nerfed a barrier, crashed into a wall, missed a corner, flicked it up over onto its side because I got too many wheels on the grass. Oh, blew that corner there, didn't I? Yeah, no good, no good, no good. Oh, we're going to die, we're going to die. There we go, we're dying. And that's it, folks. That's that's actually my, my little montage into how to gain a 146. I'm dead pleased with myself, but I'm not allowed to get excited because, you know, my blood pressure takes it too far. 65 miles for the day. 97 miles for the day, sorry. That's probably enough for me. But there it is, there's the 146. 872. Instant 2. And where does that put us? 8,000. So we halved our position in the leader table, which, which I'm really pleased with, to be honest. Really pleased with. 140. And there's my friends list. So that puts me second. I've gone above Deja. Iceman was above me. Big Popper. 
even oh no no Dobbs has still not made it he's a 147.6 I think he's just outside the gold maybe I think he needs to uh 147.7 or something 147.47 I was wasn't I and there it is folks that's it thank you very much for watching thanks for listening we'll see you on the next one take care